Are you a graphic designer who struggles to learn Photoshop or Illustrator? Do you often feel like you know the tools, but you keep creating the same basic stuff? Learning graphic design tools can be very overwhelming, and this is especially true for beginners. But what if I told you that there is a more efficient way to learn these tools, whether it's Photoshop, Illustrator, or any graphic design program? Hi guys, this is Michael, I'm a graphic designer, and in this video, I'm gonna show you the best way to approach learning that will drastically improve your graphic design skills. This will make sure that you have a strong base, a strong foundation, and you keep pushing yourself little by little to do more challenging stuff. Over the years, I have applied two approaches to learning. In this video, I will teach you the forward and the backward learning approach for graphic designers and why I personally prefer the backward learning approach once you have a solid foundation and basic knowledge of the tools. Let's start with the first one, which is the forward learning approach. So forward learning simply means a structured step-by-step -step approach in learning. So think of something like building a house. You first lay down the foundations and then you build the walls, the windows, and then you go to electricity and plumbing, and then you do the finishing. And the most common way of forward learning is by following graphic design tutorials, where there is a clear expectation of what the output will be, and then they break it down into small, easy steps that you can easily follow along. And then as you go through the process, you familiarize yourself with the tools, what they are for, and how to use them. As a self-taught graphic designer, I myself started with the most basic graphic design courses. And I've learned over the years that it's extremely important that you get these tutorials from high quality sources. So let me talk briefly about this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning platform for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry experts across graphic design, illustration, freelancing, productivity, and more. I personally like Skillshare because the tutorials are very high quality and they break it down into small digestible chapters. For new graphic designers, I highly recommend this Adobe Illustrator Essentials Training Class by Daniel Scott. This is an extensive 11-hour class that teaches you all the basic tools that you need. He is an amazing teacher and this class has a great follow-along projects that can help you get used to the software. Skillshare also has learning paths which are basically sequential class collections to master a specific skill. These are very helpful and aligns well with the forward learning approach. If this sounds exciting to you, I'm happy to share that the first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you again Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So here are some reasons why forward learning is important and why you should always start with this. So the first reason is something that I mentioned in the early parts of this video is it builds a strong foundation. So doing this approach lets us focus on core principles and the simplest tools. So as they say, you first have to walk before you can run. So it's important to learn the simple tools first, treat this as like baby steps, and then this will set you up for bigger and harder projects in the future. So the second reason is that you gain confidence, and this is especially true for beginners. This will make creating designs or artwork feel very easy because someone has already set up the process for you and you are being guided to a certain output. When I was starting out, even as simple as locating where the tools are located on the toolbar is something that I struggled with and I really needed help with that. So when you do it repeatedly and you follow more graphic design tutorials and classes, that builds confidence. And as you gain more information from industry experts, you also get an insight into the best practices and what are the habits, the bad habits that you need to avoid early on and how to have a very efficient workflow. Again, let me emphasize that as you do this, as you follow along tutorials and classes, it's extremely important that you focus on the why of each step. So why we do this, why we do that, why we use this certain step instead of this. That way we are constantly training ourselves 
to use the tools based on context and situations and not just because someone told us to do so. So I've talked about the pros of forward learning. So right now, let's talk about the cons. So one of the downside of forward learning is that you are limited to the creator's intended output. So if you really want to learn about a specific topic, maybe you want to specialize on a very particular style, and there are limited resources related to that topic, sometimes it can feel very limiting. So what can also happen with forward learning is that if you take the same easy classes over and over again, sometimes it can really stall the difficulty or the complexity. And what ends up happening is that your skills can plateau, it can be very stagnant, and you can feel that your skills are not improving. And we as humans, we are wired to get instant gratification. And I'm also very guilty of this. So sometimes following a tutorial can feel very slow and very hard to sustain. I guess for forward learning, the mindset should really be about enjoying the process and realizing that this is more of like a journey. So now that we've talked about forward learning, let's go and talk about the opposite of that, which is reverse learning. So this is the approach that I prefer, um, this is what I like to use and practice. Now that you have a basic understanding of the tools, the interface of Photoshop or Illustrator or any other software, even the keyboard shortcuts, and then you have gained enough confidence, now it's the time to really level up the complexity and difficulty and take it to another level. So in one of my past videos about how to be a graphic designer, so if you haven't watched that video, I will put a link here or here then you can watch that after this one i referred to reverse learning as reverse engineering and it's a term that i learned from my engineering class back in college but the same concept the same logic also applies to graphic design so how i like to do reverse learning or reverse engineering is i like to get a reference image first a design inspiration and i like to break it down myself based on my understanding of how tools work. So instead of someone telling you the specific steps on how to get to a certain point, I like to create my own steps that will get me from point A to point B. So since you have a reference image or a design inspiration, one of the advantages of reverse learning is it allows you to focus on the things that are relevant to you and what you want to be known for as a graphic designer. So one of my struggles early on is that my initial body of work was all over the place. And the reason for that is that I keep on following different tutorials from different classes, producers, and they can all have different styles. And I was putting out work based solely on those tutorials. But if you are in the same position, don't worry because there's really nothing wrong with that. What you can do instead is focus on one niche, one style, or one field of graphic design. So for example, I focus on branding and packaging, and then lock into that, and then reverse engineer the specific skills needed to be a master of that. I think the best way to explain this is to put it into practice. So let me show you how I do it. So this is the image that we will use, and I found this on Behance. So what we're gonna do is to figure out the steps on how we are going to achieve the same look. I started with this gradient background with pink and gray. I then created a rectangle with this blue and purple gradient. So I found this stock photo with a very similar look. I just removed the background and rotated it a little bit. I used a hue and saturation layer to recolor the moon and then use a burn tool to darken some of the areas. So for the circular grid, I'm not really sure how to do it. We can do it manually using circles and lines, but I feel like there's a better way to do it. And it's very normal to encounter roadblocks like this. Which brings me to my next point. Another advantage of reverse learning is that we start to fill in our gaps in knowledge. So sometimes we don't exactly know what we don't know until we are facing or dealing with it. So as you reverse engineer, you may encounter some roadblocks along the way. 
maybe a concept or a tool is not familiar to you and maybe to do a specific step you have to learn new things and this is where we integrate small or mini forward learning steps to fill in the gaps personally what i do is i follow related or relevant tutorials Again, this is where we integrate the forward learning approach. We are also very fortunate to be in the time where there is an abundance of resources online. So sometimes what I do is if I encounter a roadblock, I just do a quick Google search and hopefully that will solve my problem. So going back to the project, let's do a quick Google search on how to achieve a circular grid. So from my research, I found out that it's better to just do it in Illustrator using the Polar Grid tool. I then pasted this to our artwork, scaled this up, I added a clipping mask, and to this I also added a gradient overlay blending mode. I then added the details of the event, so for now let's use these fonts. And I also pulled up a similar image to the one at the bottom. I added a black and white adjustment layer to this and then a hue and saturation layer. I will duplicate this layer and I will adjust this to this magenta color and then add a white stroke on the outside. So to do the specs in the background, I will use this special brush. I did some scattered placements and then used a clipping mask. A few more adjustments and we are done. This is not exactly the same but I hope that you get the point. As you implement reverse learning, you may realize that the steps you take may be longer or completely different from what the original designer did, but they both pointed to the same output. So this brings me to the next advantage of reverse learning. It encourages creative experimentation. Similar to how this curve can be achieved using pen tool, curvature tool, or even a pencil tool, reverse learning teaches us that different roads can lead to the same destination. You train yourself to stand on your own. You are not guided by instructions from others. Rather, you are guided by the things that you know and you get creative with it. I think this also teaches us critical thinking and problem solving, which are very important skills for a graphic designer. This is also the reason why I emphasized learning the why of why we use tools. And as you continuously use the tools for certain problems, it starts to become like muscle memory where you don't easily forget them and then you can easily recall these tools on the situations that require them. Of course, since you have a reference image or an inspiration that you will dissect and reverse engineer, it is important to note that our intention here is not to copy. And you don't just post or upload it online without proper credit or attribution as if it's your original work. Please don't do that. Instead, we want to use this personally to hone in our skills. That way, when you do your own project with a similar style, you know exactly how to do it. So if you have reverse engineered a specific artwork or design and you manage to recreate it, please keep it to yourself and come up with an original piece of work based on what you have learned and post it online or your portfolio. With these two approaches, the forward and the reverse learning, your ultimate goal really is for you to consistently challenge yourself to increase the difficulty level. Whether you are a beginner, an intermediate designer, or someone who has been in the industry for quite some time, I think what you really want to do is to switch between these two learning approaches every now and then. As you do more projects, watch tutorials, and reverse engineer certain works, you continuously improve your skills as a designer. Again, you have to constantly challenge yourself to take on bigger and more challenging, more difficult projects to continuously build that confidence and mastery of the tools. When you implement this in a few years, 
you will look back and realize that what used to be the things that scare you are now very easy for you to do. What takes you 30 minutes to do before now only takes you 5 minutes to do. I guess my point really here is 1% improvement, 1% difficulty. When you try to do it consistently, it really compounds over time. But all of this would only be possible if you put in the work. So take action and start learning today. Thank you so much for joining me today. I plan to create more videos for you on this channel. So write down in the comments below the topics that you want me to cover on a future video. I really hope that you find this video helpful. Let me know your thoughts, your key takeaways, and the things that resonated with you. So keep creating, keep inspiring, and keep designing. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!